Good morning, my name is Brendan Prout. I'm with Fleet and Family at Naval Base San Diego. We're going to be talking through the homecoming brief today. This is mainly for the family members of our loved ones who have been off doing their military mission. And today we are going to be talking through what to expect as they are coming back on the tail end of deployment. I'd like to remind you that as we go through this, Homecoming is actually an event. There's going to be that moment in time we can put on the calendar. We are looking forward to being reunited with our loved ones. However, the whole process of reintegrating as a family is indeed a process. It's just not a one-time and done deal. It's going to take some time. And it's like cooking a fine meal. There's going to be elements that we need to prep ahead of time. There are going to be some things that have to marinate a little bit in order to have the best results. Cooking itself takes some process. Some things need to be baked. Some things need to be broiled. And much like that, before we get to enjoy the meal on its final plating as it's presented at the table, Reintegration is going to be all of those elements together, many different things that go in a particular order in order to make the best possible results for all of us to enjoy. So we're going to be looking at the deployment experience itself. We're going to be looking at our emotional reactions to deployment, and we're going to be looking at the operational stress components involved as well. You may remember from pre-deployment briefs that happened oh so many months ago that there are a number of different emotional stages involved with deployment. They are very predictable and very normal. People have been deploying in the military for literally thousands of years, and because of that, we've got a lot of track record to look back on to know what to expect both on the military service member side of things as well as the left behind family member side of things. So you may remember that anticipating your departure had a whole variety of stress reactions and different emotions that came along with it. Stage two, detachment and withdrawal. Our loved one might not have even been gone yet, but we were already maybe withdrawing a little bit emotionally, or maybe they were. We felt that there were a lot of emotions that went along with that as well. As we hit the actual deployment, our emotions kicked into high gear. Maybe we hit that moment where we felt like we were dropping all the balls all the time and we couldn't manage it. That emotional disorganization that was so commonly felt by so many family members. It's par for the course. It's normal. It's not just you. Most of us experience that at some point in time. And then moving right along, Stage four, recovery and stabilization. That might be where we found our groove. We fell into a rhythm and now we were able to manage family life pretty well without our loved one being present. And now we're hitting stage five, the anticipation of return. What is it gonna look like when they are back? Is everything gonna now go into disarray? Are things gonna go back to the way they were before? Is it gonna be different? Uh, the answer to that is many, many, many different varieties for all of us. It, there are so many possibilities, but those are the emotions that go along with that, that anxiety and that wondering, what is it going to be like? So let's talk through some of these uh, stages, the anticipation of return and the return and renegotiation as our loved ones come back, as well as reintegration and stabilization. Before we get there, let's talk about some of the things we have experienced during this deployment. It's a very healthy and positive thing to look at some of the things that were successes for our family. Maybe we had some financial goals. Maybe there were some educational goals we reached. Maybe at the end of the day, our goal was just to have our family still be here when our loved one came back. And we're here. We're almost there. We're going to get through this together. Maybe there were some lessons learned. And for those of you who like to journal, I highly encourage you, you take the time to journal. Write down the lessons that you learned during this deployment that you might want to carry forward to the next one if you anticipate there being more deployments in your future, or just so that you can share them with your service member as they come back. Here are the things that we learned while you were away, and we want to share this with you. And 
embracing an attitude of gratitude is always a helpful thing. Maybe it's just, oh, thank the maker that our loved one is coming back. Maybe there are some specific things you can be grateful for. Grateful for your loved one being present back in your life. Maybe you can be grateful for the way that you were able to communicate while your loved one was away. Maybe, maybe you can be grateful for the way that you were able to step up and manage so many things. You, you can be proud of that. A lot of things that we can be grateful for, and carrying that forward is always a good look on all of us. So let's talk about stage five, the anticipation of return. There are things on both the family member side and the service member side that are par for the course. They are normal. You may be feeling happy and, oh my gosh, I've got all these things I need to get taken care of before my loved one is back. Maybe the activity level is, is spiking and you're feeling like things are a bit hectic and you're anticipating having to deal with the change of them being back. That is also, that can produce a lot of anxiety. It can produce excitement. Maybe you are experiencing some concern about the goals that you had at the beginning of this thing and you didn't meet those goals. You know what? Life happens. Let yourself off that hook. I bet that for as many goals that you didn't hit, there were unexpected things that came onto your plate and you were able to overcome those obstacles. So maybe they weren't goals in the beginning, but they got added to your checklist and you were able to accomplish those things. Maybe you're just thinking about the actual homecoming day. What is that going to look like? If you've never been to a peer side reunion before, or you've never met someone at the airport after they've been gone for a long time, it that can produce a lot of concern and anxiety and excitement, all sorts of these things all mixed up together. Now on the side of your service member, they might be feeling very anxious and excited. They might be wondering how are they going to fit in with the family. Life has gone on while they have been gone and your family has grown in different ways. Maybe they're concerned about what your relationship is going to look like um, as, a, as a couple that is committed to one another or their relationship with their kids when kids are involved. That is all very normal and par for the course. Um, sometimes single sailors are looking forward to just getting away from all the people because it is very people-y on a ship or on a shore-based command and you're just around folks all the time. And I bet you they are definitely thinking about their homecoming day. Stage six, return and renegotiation. Now this is process. This is a lot of process. You're going to have to figure out what face-to-face -face communication looks like now that they are back. And let's just agree, it's going to be awkward. Lean into the awkward. Embrace the awkward. Awkward is okay. That is the name of the game at this point. And you'll get through the awkward and you'll find your groove and it will normalize. It will be okay. It's kind of like the old saying, you know, once you know how to ride a bike, you can jump back on and do it again. But the first time you get back on a bike, if you haven't been on it in a while, it is a little awkward. And then you go, oh, this is how it works. And you figure it out, and then it's smooth sailing from there on. It's got to be the same thing with re re your loved one returning and renegotiating how all these relationships work. Now, uh, we are always going to have to lean into the fact that uh, healthy things grow and growing things change. If you're healthy, you're growing and you're changing. Change is not bad. Change is just different. You've grown. Your loved one has grown. The service members have grown. There's been a lot of growth while they've been gone. And so we're going to lean into that and embrace the growth and embrace the change and look to celebrate what good things have happened in the middle of that. And yes, there is going to be a lot of renegotiation, both with your roles as parents, with your relationships with your kids. It's, it's got to be a lot of figuring it all out. And sometimes it just comes together very smoothly. Sometimes it takes some work and either is okay. Even renegotiating your friendships 
and your relationships with your extended family members is going to take a little bit of time for the service members. This is all par for the course. They have been used to doing their duty, to being in a duty cycle, having a rhythm of things that need to get done on mission all day, every day, and they are now coming back to a lot of freedom and flexibility in their schedule. And you left behind here on the home front, you have fallen into a rhythm and a groove and you've been accomplishing life together. And now you're gonna have a new element back in that mix and it's gonna look different. It's gonna take a little bit of time to figure it out. That is okay. Now stage seven, reintegration and stabilization. This is what we're all looking forward to. Getting past the awkward and getting back into normal where everything is relaxed and comfortable and it just feels good. It's when your sense of family is very renewed, you're feeling like you're back on track emotionally. But don't, don't worry if things take a little while to get there. It can take a while and that is okay. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or something wrong with your family or something wrong with your relationship. This is absolutely normal for the process of getting here to take a while. And I'm just gonna give you a warning. Being a military family, there might be another deployment on the horizon coming down the pipeline. So you might quickly move from stage seven, this reintegration and stabilization and everything is going fine. And now you're looking at another deployment and you start the cycle over again. That is absolutely normal for a military family. Enjoy stage seven while it lasts and then lean into every stage to understanding when there is a new deployment, every deployment is a little different because you have grown, your family has grown, your service member has grown. So let's just do a little activity that is helpful towards getting us ready for homecoming. Three tips that we're gonna talk about for homecoming, renegotiation, and reintegration. Now first, let's, stop with, let's start with tips for homecoming. You can share homecoming ideas with your loved one, depending on what your communication is like with them, but also with others who are gonna be involved, the other family members that are gonna be part of the actual homecoming event. Now, of course, keeping it simple is a great rule of thumb. We all love to do extravagant, giant things every once in a while, but you can make something a big deal without making it a big production. And that is a great way to keep us all healthy emotionally and physically and mentally. Nobody wants to overexert themselves for the sake of just one quick moment in time because a quick moment, well, if, if we're being real, if it's a peer side reunion, it's not quick. If you've never been through a peer side reunion before, it's, it's a long process. It's emotionally draining. Set yourself up and know that you are going to be there for hours, hours. Um, there's a few tips to go along with that sort of homecoming experience, especially if you've got little kids involved. Maybe find a place other than the pier where you can go watch the ship coming in from sea and wave to the sailors who are manning the rails and knowing that your loved one is out there and enjoy that. And from that point in time, it's probably going to be at least a couple of hours before the ship actually ties up at the dock and you're able to see your loved one. It takes time. It's frustrating. Ex just expect that. Also expect that you're going to need some shade and cover out there on the pier. So whether you are able to bring a pop-up canopy or just some parasols to keep the sun off of yourselves while you are waiting there, as well as bringing games and activities and snacks for your loved ones while you're hanging out. Make it a party, but plan that the party is gonna be taking place until the actual, uh, <laughs> the actual homecoming when you get to see them coming down the brow and joining you on the pier. Also, have a backup plan. Yes, have two. Um, things happen, life happens. What if the the ship is delayed. What if they're early? Have a few contingency plans for how you're going to make all of this work. And for the actual date, once you've got your loved one back, whether they're walking off of a plane or walking off of a, a pier, 
don't over schedule everything. Don't, don't, we just encourage you to not have hours and hours worth of activities planned. Be flexible. It's great to have plans, but it's a great idea to have those plans be very loose. Be willing to let go of those plans and say, well, this is what we had an idea for, but we don't have to do that. What would you like to do, honey? And see what they're up for. They might be really energetic and ready to do all the things. You might be exhausted. Or it might be vice versa. Maybe they are exhausted and you're ready to do all the things. Meet each other where you are actually at. Maybe both of you are energetic and ready to re-engage with all the things, but your kids are having total meltdown. This could happen. Prepare yourselves mentally and emotionally for that. Uh, talking about renegotiating the actual roles once you are back in the home environment, there's this idea that while your loved one has been off doing the military mission, the chain of command has fallen to you and now you've got everything in line and everything is working well and now your loved one's back and figuring out who's in charge. Partner up. Partner up together. Don't ever let there be a divided front on the leadership of your family. You two are both leading the family and be willing to serve one another. Servant leadership is so powerful and it's such a powerful lesson for our kiddos to look to see how we partner up together even when we're um, figuring it out together at the same time. Letting there be some time to readjust to the roles. Uh, there can be bitterness and anger and resentment and sadness and awkwardness of with kids engaging with your loved one who's been gone regardless of their age it can look a little different there are some stereotypical expectations but it's only stereotypical so you could have a teenager who's very angsty and withdrawn and doesn't want to engage with their their parent who's been gone or they might be all hugs and all cuddly and very clingy. It could be either way for any age range. The important thing is to communicate. Unexpressed expectations become unmet expectations. Don't assume, please ask, ask lots of questions. Both for you as a family member, asking your service member, what do you need? What would work for you? What would you like? and encouraging them to ask the same thing of you and the family members, especially the kids. What would you like to do together? How can we spend time together? What would make this good for you? There's going to be different answers, and you all will figure it out together. And reintegrating as a family, you know, maybe you're used to doing everything on your own, let your service member jump in and help with the stuff that you are used to doing. Maybe you are so ready to hand over those keys and I don't want to drive the car again. Would you please drive? Just keep in mind they haven't been driving in months and months. So this could be a little perilous. Lean into that and uh, let this happen. But uh, maybe it's some other simple things that they've been helping with. Uh, that they would like to help with, like the homework with the kids, the kitchen, the vacuuming. Maybe there are things that they never really liked to do before they left, but now that they're back, they're really looking forward to getting engaged with that. So allow them in. Let them do that. Let them have some time as well to get reacquainted with the family, with you, with your home. It might be sparks and magic and unicorns and rainbows and puppies right from the get-go. Or it might be a little awkward having them back in, in your home and in your bedroom and in your bed with you. Let it be awkward. Lean in and embrace that. It's going to be okay. Enjoy the moment together. You don't have to have everything planned out, and when plans change, that's all right. Enjoy the present. And I would encourage you to not do the comparison game. Don't let somebody else's chapter 20 define what your chapter 2 needs to look like. And for those of you who are also walking alongside one another with chapter 1 or chapter 2 of this adventure, it's going to look different depending on your own family background, your dynamics. Your family is not their family. They might live across the street from you in military housing, but they are not the same as you. You be you and allow you to be you. It's okay.
Let's talk about security for just a moment because this is a real thing, both personal security and operational security. Both of them are very important and as we are approaching homecoming, there are some practical considerations. Now I know we would love to jump out on social media and blast out to the world how proud we are of our sailor and the work that they've been doing and tell everybody, here's when they're gonna be back. They're showing up at this time on this date and here's the ship that they've been on and here's the place that they're coming from. Please do not. Please withhold and ask. Ask, don't assume. You can talk to your ombudsman about what is okay to share and what isn't. And make sure that you spread this information to other family members who might be just as excited. We love to see parents and grandparents and siblings and aunts and uncles and cousins involved in this process, but we sometimes need to bring them into the circle of trust to let them know what is okay to share and what isn't so that we can keep our military service members safe and keep ourselves safe because this is the world we live in. So ask, don't assume, find out what you is okay to be shared and what isn't and work within those guidelines. And um, also children, any children who have social media, you want to let them know what they can share and what they can't as well. You might need to change your privacy settings for a brief period of time during this just to make sure that everybody is safe, but ask and find out. Another very important component to this reintegration process is taking a look at operational stress control or management. It's a fact that our military service members have been operating in a stressful environment and it has been a sustained stressful environment for the entirety of their deployment. So there could be changes in the, the way that they physically appear or their mental functioning based on this exposure to military operations for an extended period of time. And we can come alongside them and provide support toward resilience and understanding through empathetic listening and observation as they are coming back to us. You may be familiar with the stress continuum model. This gives us an idea of what to look for so we can have eyes on our service members as they're coming back. And just being aware of this could help us get them connected with resources as they may or may not need them. Uh, typically, we look at the model where if somebody is in the blue range, maybe they are, they're lethargic, they feel like they're stuck in their career, they're apathetic. It, this is more on the depressive side of things. Green, the green range means they're not completely stress-free because life is not stress-free, but they're, they're ready to go. They're mission-ready is what we would consider it. Yellow this is probably where a lot of us live. We're reacting to the normal stresses of life. Maybe if we're in the yellow range, our loved ones are having trouble sleeping or they're easy to irritate. Uh, it is a place that we can reverse from. We can receive support and get back into the green range fairly easily. Now, orange, this is when we're starting to get to the point where it's affecting our ability to be mission ready. It might be more than they can handle alone. It might be more than you feel like you can handle to provide them with support. And this is where we recommend starting to seek help, whether it's counseling through fleet and family, through the chaplain, or through other medical clinical providers. Red, this is where we would recommend immediate medical attention. This is where they might be in danger of harming themselves or others. And we would definitely encourage you to seek medical attention right away if you find that your loved one is in this red range. And I am going to go right through here. This is the duplicate slide. Some of the resources that are available to you are, of course, your chaplain. We like to say our chaplains are the most underutilized resource in the Navy because not only are they spiritual care professionals, they are also trained in mental and emotional health. They've got graduate degrees in counseling and they are available to help. And they are, of course, 100% confidential. 
You can go to the chain of command as well if you find you need support, or you can encourage your service member to go to the chain of command for that sort of support. The Ombudsman can be a resource to you as well. They have received special training to help identify stress and provide resources toward resiliency. Of course, Fleet and Family Support Center, we've got counselors, we've got folks who are happy to come alongside your entire family and walk you through this, whether you're the service member, the loved ones left behind, kiddos, we are there for you. Military One Source also provides clinical counseling that is 100% confidential. You can go to their website and get connected with them. And the Navy Center for Operational Stress Control is available to you. You can always go to health.mil or if you're finding that yourself in crisis mode as a family or your, your service member is in crisis mode, please call the Veterans Crisis Line at one 800 273-8255 and just press option number one when you call and we will get you connected immediately to the help that you might need. Now as part of this whole homecoming process we do provide a variety of workshops for the service members whether they are at a shore base command or aboard ship a person much like myself could travel out to the ship or be embedded with the ship's complement already to provide these trainings that help the service members reintegrate with their significant intimate partners to help uh, them reintegrate with their kids if there are kids involved. We also have trainings available for you so that you can help your kids navigate the homecoming process. Uh, we've got service workshops as well for teenagers and for kiddos so that they can learn what it's going to be like and help them with what they might be imagining this whole thing is going to be like as their experience. We're happy to provide the support and you can call the hotline number for Fleet and Family. We can get you connected with these trainings and these resources. If you find it you need help with financial planning, let me tell you, we have some amazing people at Fleet and Family who are passionate about making sure that military service members and their families are taken care of well with their finances. Maybe you've made some financial mistakes during this deployment and you feel like you need a little help digging yourself out of a hole. Don't worry, we've all been there and we are happy to lend a hand. Maybe you feel like you're doing all right financially, but I guarantee you, even if you're doing all right, you can always be doing a little bit better or a lot better. And we've got these folks who are passionate about getting more money into the pockets of our service members and their families. So reach out and let them make them, let them come alongside you to make you aware of resources you might not even know are available to you as a military family. So uh, just to sum it up, we want to remind you that Fleet and Family provides a very wide range of support and services and resources to you, whether it's educational resources, you're concerned about getting your kids into the school programs that they need to be in. Maybe you want to seek enhanced education for yourself or your service member might want to be seeking some educational opportunities. We can get you connected. Financial counseling, legal services, counseling, uh, Maybe you are looking to get a job as the spouse of an active duty service member and you don't know what that looks like because you've been watching the kiddos at home for a while. We can help you brush up your resume. We can help you with interview skills. We can walk you through what it looks like to get either get a civilian job or a federal job. Lots of programs for, spoil, for spouse employment development. And if you've got a a kid that's 16 or older that they would like a little bit of help trying to find employment, we can help them as well. Navy MWR is also a great resource available to you. Morale, welfare, and recreation, so many programs. We have the LMS, the Learning Management System, which provides you with virtual trainings and educational opportunities for free that you and your family members can avail yourself of. Military One Source, of course, has got a long list of different resources available to you, as well as clinical counseling, which is confidential. And 
If you need to get a hold of me, I am happy to make myself available. If I don't know the answer to the question, I know the people to ask and I can get you connected. So here's my contact information. Feel free to email me and I hope you are uh, going to be, well, I know you're looking forward to reconnecting with your loved ones again. Hope this helped you out. Have a great day and we will talk to you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.